Welcome back class. We've gone through our lab setup for our Streamline 70-741 lab environment uh, that we're working in while we do not have access to our classroom due to the uh, current outbreak. So we're going to be working with a restricted lab environment. We're not going to be doing all the labs and some of the labs that we do do, we won't be doing the entire lab. For example, our first lab, lab one, we're only going to be doing exercises 1-1 one -one or 1.1 one -one and 1.2. We won't be doing 1-3 or any of the other exercises, nor will we be doing the lab challenge. It's going to be clean, simple, easy to, easy to complete. We've got enough stress in our lives right now. We don't need any more. I'm trying to make this as easy as possible for you. So let's dig into our lab one. Okay, and lab one is implementing IPv4 and IPv6 addressing. Now we'll be, we'll, we'll be playing around with IPv4. We're going to do one basic setting of an IPv6 address. Uh, as I said before, we don't have our Hyper-V environment, so we can't go all the way with this. So we're going to be doing, as I said, exercises 1.1, .1, configuring IPv4, exercise 1.2, configuring IPv6, and then this will complete that lab. So let's dig in. The first thing they want us to do is to log in to both DC1 and then subsequently server 1. So I've already gone ahead and logged into my DC1. It's over here. All they want us to do is go to Tools, go to DHCP and they want us to select the server name right click on it go to all tasks and restart it uh, they simply just want to make sure that the DHCP server has been started properly and that it's available to hand out IP addresses it's there there's our scope and we're in good shape I'm gonna go ahead and jump over to server 1 and log in Okay, so what they would like us to do is come down to the bottom right and right click on our network icon and go to Open Network and Sharing Center. In the Open Network and Sharing Center, uh, we're going to go ahead and on the left hand side click on Change Adapter Settings. We're going to double click on our Ethernet adapter. We're going to go to Properties and we're going to double click IPv4. This is allow us to take a look at our settings. Here's your answers for question number one. What is the current IP address, the current subnet mask, the current default gateway, and the current preferred DNS server? Enter those answers and you will have question number one. That was easy. Once you've answered that question, go ahead and change your selections to set it to obtain an IP address automatically as well as obtain DNS server address automatically and then click OK. Click OK one more time. It's going to work to obtain an IP address from our DHCP server. It's going to take just a moment or two so we're just going to sit here and we're going to listen to some background music play if you have that playing. Well, that was a long 10 seconds, wasn't it? Okay, so I'm going to leave this open on our screen and I'm going to come down to the start button. I'm going to click start and I'm going to type CMD to open up a command prompt. And I'm simply going to type in IP config. Who remembers what the equivalent of this is in Linux? Did I hear IF config? You are correct. Here is our IP information. So question number two, what is the current IP address configuration for Ethernet adapter? Ethernet. Well, what address did we get? 
172.16.0.120. Previously we had dot 40. This has been assigned to us automatically. How do we know that? Get that information, enter your IP address, subnet mask, and default gateway. Enter that information for question number six. And now we're going to take another look. We're going to do IP config space slash all. We're going to look at all information about that Ethernet adapter. We can see the answers to question number three. How do you know that this address for Ethernet adapter Ethernet was assigned by a DHCP server? Well, if we look down our list of information, we can see right here, DHCP enabled. Yes. That tells us that we obtained our address via DHCP. How, what is the DHCP server that we obtained it from? Well, right here, we is our list at our DHCP server address. There are your answers for question number three. Question number four, and this goes back to our networking course. The default gateway could be assigned to any local IP address. Remember, it doesn't have to be dot one. We're currently using dot one, but it doesn't have to be. It can be any valid IP address. What or which address range could you use to assign to the default gateway to indicate a local router? In other words, what is the range of usable IP addresses on our network? We know that our network is assigning us an IP address of 172.16.0.120. We can see our subnet mask is 255.255.255.0. What is the network portion? Well, it's that portion of the bits that are filled in the subnet mask. Our network is a 172.16.0 network. It is a class C subnet mask, which means that we've got a total of 256 IP addresses available in that network. However, you cannot use the first, you cannot use the last. The first is the network ID, the last is the broadcast. So we've got 254 IPs that are usable. One is a number, so our first address is one, our last address is 254. So your answer should be 172.16.0.1 through 172.16.0.254. Remember your networking. We're going to jump back over here to the, the Network and Sharing Center. And we're going to go back into our properties and we're going to double click on IPv4. We are going to say use the following address. We're going to use 172.16.0.160. Is that the correct subnet mask? No, it is not. We need to change it to our class C to make sure that we're on the same network. We fill in our default gateway. We also need to assign D8 DNS server, correct? Yes, correct. And what is that address? Yes, dot 10. We click OK. We click OK. We click close. Now, take a screenshot. You need to put that screenshot in there. That is the, in fact, that might be our only screenshot. I know that's our first. That goes in your lab workbook. And exercise 1.1 is completed once you show me this. This is your screenshot right here, showing the IPv, IPv4 address being assigned to it. Let's move on to exercise 1.2, configuring IPv6 settings. It's real simple. We're going to go back to that same network adapter. We're going to double click. We're going to go to details. What is the uh, local link IPv6 address that's already assigned? 
Each one of you will probably have a different address, but it's going to look similar to this. So go ahead and add that to your question number five. Okay, so feel free to pause this while you enter that. Now, we're going to go ahead and we're going to close and we're going to go to properties and look down here where IPv6 is at. We're going to double click on that. What we're going to do is we're going to say use the following address and we're going to type that address in and that is FE80 colon 0 colon AC4A colon AA04 colon 713A colon 0 colon 0 colon CE2B. Let's just double check that from our workbook. FE80 colon 0 colon AC4A colon AA04 colon 713A colon 0 colon 0 colon CE2B. Correct. I'm going to click one, one time in subnet prefix length. It automatically fills it in for us, the value of 64. We're going to leave our gateway empty. We're going to click OK. We're going to click OK one more time and we're going to click close. We're going to jump back over to our command prompt and rerun the IP config one more time. We can now see that we have a second IPv6 address assigned and this will be your second screenshot. Go ahead and take a screenshot of that and paste it into your workbook. Save your workbook and upload it to your Dropbox on D2L and lab number one is completed. As I said, we're not going to progress any farther in this. It was quick, it was easy, and it's done. Thank you very much and look forward to our next lab.